What's up, everybody? Welcome to part four of our playing games with OpenAI, Python, TensorFlow, neural networks, and everything else tutorial. In the last tutorial, uh, we basically covered creating our neural network model and training that model, and we saw the results. They weren't that great. It was like 60%-ish accuracy, and actually we ended on like a 57. Um, we did see loss come down, though. That's arguably more important, but uh, now is the moment of truth. Let's see how it did. So what I'm going to do now is basically we're just going to play some games. We've got a model once we've trained it. So we could save like, so for example, just in case you wanted to, you could say model.save, blah, 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 dot model. And then later, if you wanted to load it, since we already have a model defined, you actually could just do model.load this model. But if you started the script new, i.e. you didn't have all this code before, you would still need the model code and you would just you would say model equals this and you would need to know the input size and then you could load the model. Anyway, that's okay. This trains fast enough that we don't have to worry about any of that. <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do is, let's just run through this thing. So we're gonna say scores equals empty list, choices equals an empty list. Um, for each, each game that we want to play in range, let's do 10. We're going to actually, uh, visualize these games. So yeah, anyway, so we're going to say score equals zero. We're going to say game memory, empty lists. We're going to say prev obs, empty lists. This is actually pretty simple, uh, or similar to the thing we wrote before. We could probably make one function that does all of this and either uses random or uses the agent, but that's okay. We're just going to say m.reset. Um, and now we're actually going to iterate through the game. So for underscore, which is basically your frame, in range of the goal steps, however many steps we want to make, which is 500, say env.render. So this will slow things down, but that's okay. If len prev obs, <coughs> yeah, prev obs is greater than zero, or actually what we're going to do is we're going to say if that is equal to zero. So if there is nothing, then actually we're just going to say the action equals random dot rand range zero to two again. So on that first frame, you know, we're not going to know what move to make, but that's fine. And then what we're going to say, once we've seen a frame, we're going to say else action is going to equal, again, this needs to be a zero or a one. Our network outputs one hot, which is one zero or zero one. So we're going to say np.argmax to get the argmax of that one hot. And then it's the argmax of model, whatever our model is, dot predict. And we're going to predict the prev underscore observation. And what we have to do is reshape that observation just like we did. Thought I was going to be able to show it to you really quickly. Where did we reshape? Where did we reshape that? Here? Yeah, basically here. So it's going to take that basically the same reshape. Um, so prevobs dot um, reshape, reshape, negative one, len prev obs. So it'll be four, but just in case <laughs> one, um, Ooh, I'm getting lost here. Model dot predict. Where's this one for? So that's for the reshape. This is for the predict. A predict will output a list. It takes a list and outputs a list. We want the zero with, so that'll be the the first if, because we're only predicting based on one frame right now. So <clears throat> we just take the zero if. Now, if that's confusing to you, by the way, anytime you don't know, like, why are we using this index here? Why are we doing that? Print it out. See what the, just like print out, basically that's the zero if index for that observate, or for the model.predict. You can just print that, like just print it out. See what we're dealing with. Get rid of the index. See what it is. So um, anyway, that's the action that we're gonna take. Now, outside of that um, line there, uh, that's, um, I kind of want to zoom it in now. I like to make the text as big as possible. I made it small so we could fit like this line now. So hopefully, go back a second if you're still typing that line. But anyway, I'm going to make this big again. Okay, so outside of that else, what we're going to say, choices.append, whatever the action is, we want to just know what all of the choices are. The reason we want to do this is, I mean, since we're not headless, I mean, like if we were headless, a lot, a lot of times what can happen is your neural network will just converge and only predict one thing. 
Um, or it will predict like 90% one thing, which can be really frustrating. So we kind of want to know how, what, what is the ratio our network is predicting here. So we're just going to append the choice so we can do, we can look at that. Now we're going to say new observation um, is going to equal, or actually rather new observation reward done info equals env dot step. And we're going to take whatever action we want. Prev obs is equal to the new underscore observation. And then we're going to say game memory um, dot append new observation action. And then we're going to say score plus equals reward. And then if done break. So this line here, we actually probably like this line, this line we need, this line we don't need unless you're wanting to retrain. So, um, what you could do is turn this into a, a much more reinforcement learning operation and keep saving the game because hopefully as you'll see, unless I'm wrong, <laughs> uh, but I'm never wrong, uh, our neural network's only going to get better and it's going to get better than the, the, the data it trained on. Therefore, if you just kept cycling through here, eventually you'd get a neural network that was like crazy. Anyway, but we're not going to like retrain based on this. We're just going to run one time through, and that's game dot memory. I don't think so. Game underscore memory. Okay, if done, we'll break out of this for loop, and then we're just going to come down here, and we're going to say scores dot append whatever that score is. Okay, scores, and then finally, let's do. We'll print um, what was the average score. Um, and that'll be the sum of the scores divided by the len of the scores. We could also print, <clears throat> uh, we want to know like choice uh, one and then choice two dot, uh, let's make this the same as the other one, dot format. And then again, let's do, um, Choices.count1, so how many times will we do one, divided by the len of the choices. And then, I'll just come down here. Eh, I think I can get away with this. Um, and then choices.count, and this shouldn't be two, this should be zero. Count zero, divided by len choices. So it's basically going to be like what percentage of each of these land choices. This closes off this format. Right. So actually we want to do that. Okay. I think that's going to work. <laughs> and then we'll just print. Well, we don't. Yeah, let's just do this. Okay, save, run. Let's see how we do. This is going to retrain, redo everything, unless I forget. Forgot. <clears throat> Anybody? Ooh, there's a 128 in there. This one's training better. I saw it's like some 62s in the accuracy. We probably should have just done like five, or three epics, rather. If this is training slow, you probably just do three epics. It doesn't look like we're getting too much better than that. I bet if we kept training it though, because loss is coming down, so. I still ended on 58. Okay, so now it's playing. As you can see, it's doing a little better. It's still actually kind of, it falls a lot. This guy's got it. This guy's like, this ain't nothing. <laughs> falls a lot to the left, but he's weak to the left. Look at them. They're all failing to the left. Come on, you got it, man. <laughs> They all fail to the left. That's really interesting. So the average score here is a 144. It shows one 50% of the time, shows zero also about 50% of the time. So let me close this out. That's actually kind of a bad one. Um, I expected that we were gonna beat this thing. I demand a 195 or greater. Again, again. 
Maybe just maybe I'll just do three epics. Maybe I won't do five epics. I almost wonder if it's just getting overfit or something. Oops, I didn't mean to make it this big. I'm pretty surprised that, um, like, I, I would expect kind of like at least above 200. Either way, though, a 144 on the data that we trained against, which was like, you know, the average was like a 60. But are we missing the game? <gasps> We're missing them. Oh, this guy's doing even worse. Disgusting. What do we get? Average score was a 74. Oh my goodness, y'all. I'm angry. We're still, that's still better, but seriously, 64? Come on. Come on. I'm demanding a solved. There we go. Some weaker. Well, that one has a few large good games. Anyway, I changed the uh, epics to three. I think. Let me go back down there. Well, we'll know in a second. Yeah, three epics, 58 accuracy. Maybe I need a bigger network. Maybe I need a smaller network. Who knows? Yeah, you get it, cart. <laughs> get it. There it is. Hold it. Nice. Yeah, these are doing better. Maybe we overfit. Get it? Catch it? We actually caught it. That was pretty good. Dang, look at this guy. He's killing it. <laughs> nice. I think that one actually made it through all 500 frames. I'm pretty sure it didn't lose. This one's good, too. I think we're going to get this one. Let's, let's hope for above 200 average. I demand that we solve this. Catch it. This is taking a while to get through 10 games, so I'm pretty sure we got this thing. Got this on lock. What do we get? Boom! Average score of 304. Now we solved. Okay, save that model. <laughs> Let's see. This is actually... Uh, we can save this model, actually. Because uh, I think we did this in line, right? Yeah, this is... Uh, okay, so model.save. We'll call this uh, 304 dot model thank you sir thank you sir okay so what you could do is instead uh it's not going to be the same model but i'll go ahead and uh, we can close out of this and we could take away that and we could run how many games did it say we had to do to solve this i think it said 100 games it needed to average 195 i think that's right let me run this while i look and confirm Open AI. <clears throat> Hopefully we do just as good as we did before. Let's see. Yeah, over 100 consecutive trials, we have to score above um, 195. We'll see if this one goes. Hopefully we'll go headless nice and quick. Ah, it's taking a while to play 100 games. I guess because it's doing so well. <gasps> no. No. <laughs> I refuse. Again, maybe we need to load up our model. Our other model was killing it. The other thing we can do, too, is we can play, let's say, rather than 10,000 games, we could play 500 games to train it. Um, not that I think that's going to improve accuracy. It's probably going to uh, make accuracy decline quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, uh, we could do that too. Wait for it. Be nice if this was in parallel, I guess. <laughs> this is taking forever. I guess it's because we're... Hopefully this one will return something better than what the other one was then. Because we trained 10,000 examples headless in like five seconds. <laughs> or maybe it's just stuck. There we go. Average score of 386. Nice. I'll save that one too, actually. 
386 stuff. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Um, questions, comments, concerns, if you didn't get it or whatever, uh, feel free to leave them below if you can apply this to uh, another game. I'd love to see it. There are, again, just tons of these games. Um, at least the one in basic uh, OpenAI, uh, like Mountain Car, it's not going to work very well in Mountain Car. <laughs> it needs to be something that you're actually going to control. So like a lot of the Atari ones, for example, again, if you're on Windows, this is just not going to work. Uh, but the Atari ones would probably work pretty well. Board games would be really good. We could definitely make a GoBot. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe I'll try that one next. Uh, a GoBot would probably do really well, actually, in this one. So you could train it really quick. Especially in like a small 9x9 like this. I wonder if it has... Um, I've actually never played this one. I wonder if it has a AI that you can play against. Or if you have to play against yourself. Which would be fine. You could actually compete against yourself. No problem. Huh. Anyway. Um, so yeah, try to apply it to something else and post below if you do. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in another tutorial.